Hey, everybody. I'm here today talking to Heather and Rush from Vertical Challenge, and uh, we're actually going to talk all things activation uh, because the things that these two folks are doing are, are some of the coolest I've seen. So big welcome to you two. How are you guys doing today? Thank you. You're doing well. Yep. Happy to be here. Yeah, likewise. Well, I wanted to talk to you uh, specifically. We're talking about a sort of a case study um, specifically about the stony field activation, we'll call it. And so rather than me uh, not doing it justice and trying to describe it, why, Heather, why don't you kind of give us a, just a bit of an overview uh, uh, from your perspective? And then I'll, I'll add some thoughts as to why I think this is such a, just a, a cool activation to be talking about. Okay, yeah, sure. Um, so when we approach Stony Field, they're local here to New Hampshire where we're based as well. And in conversations with them, they were looking to connect mostly with families, um, trying to uh, expand their brand awareness and get some product in consumers' hands. Um, and so for us, it was a really good matchup because we have three generations of families because the program has been going for 30 years. So we have three generations. We've got grandparents, moms, dads, and their kids there, which was uh, and is the exact target audience that Stonyfield's trying to reach. And uh, because we are, we do an on-site um, ski and snowboard race series, we have engagement to physically hand out product samples and coupons to consumers. And so that's kind of how our conversation started there was, okay, well, we really want to connect with these consumers, you know, one-on-one -on -one, and um, you have the property that, that can do this. So then that's when Rush and I went back to the drawing board to come up with the exact details of how we were going to activate for them. And uh, so I think Rush has some cool pictures and yeah. explanation on the exact activation that we let, did. Let me interrupt. Pre I'm going to preempt Rush because I, I know he does have some cool pictures, but I'm, I'm not done with the cool like the psychology behind the activation. Uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> which is what I find so um one of the things I find so impressive, you like you sort of glossed over um, a couple of pieces that I think truly demonstrate why you're so good at sponsorship activation. Um, and it's, we knew we had this audience, this like multi-generational family audience that hit, I've seen your audience data, they hit all this great demo, demographic information, coming purchases, all the stuff these people wanna do. And then Stonyfield had a specific action. They wanted that audience to take, enter Heather and Rush to be that, that, um, that process that brings audience and outcome together. So like how important was audience in, in this discussion, this negotiation and, and in creating the activation? Oh my gosh, it was everything. In fact, having gone through that process of identifying who our personas were, we found just in the last year or two that our fans are all about health, wellness, natural, organic products. Um, I know being on site personally at our events, uh, you know, we had a, another sponsor on board and their product was a high sugar ca carbonated caffeinated beverage. And anytime they were looking for a free sample, they would say, ah, my kid's not getting that. So we were able to actually take that data back to, you know, the table and look at brands that aligned with that natural and organic and healthy perspective. And so that's how Stonyfield came on our radar, radar was because of that. So audience data is, is incredibly important to figuring out which prospects you should target. And then on the other side, when you are talking and having conversations, Rush and I have been able to say, hey, you know what? Our fans want, want your products. They want these healthy products. They don't want these ones that are high fat and sugary. So let's have a conversation about how we can connect you with them. So that whole process is, is important. It, it's really interesting to me to hear you describe that. And, and, and because often we as sponsorship seekers, we become obsessed with the idea of marketing at all costs right? We just got to get the logos, the samples, the whatever. We, let's just get it to these people. Then these people who are our audience, our most important asset, they'll just consume whatever products we tell them to consume because that's what we want. But actually all of the sponsors, all of the brands that we talk to, what they want is to find their ideal consumer and to provide them with a product that that consumer 
wants. It's mm-hmm. not about forcing their product into someone's hands. It's about the, the audience wanting it. And so you, you listen to this feedback and you did your, you, you guys put in the work to figure out what your audience wanted and then enter the Stonyfield activation. And so, and so Rush, take us, take, take us through that. Let's have a look, t- like, tell us, tell us how this rolled out. Well, it, 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 this also, the way we did this also played off some of our audience data because one of the things we looked at and, and also shout out to Chris because Chris absolutely helped us refine our vision of how to use that audience data and, and, and how, what sorts of things to gather. And, and he had given us some, some questions to start with, which we incorporated. And then we got to thinking about, truly when we were making up questions on surveys, we thought, what do prospects actually want to hear? What sort of data would be useful to them? And that's actually almost surprisingly one of the things that led to what Heather mentioned about the organic and the healthy products and things like that is we, we, <laughs> we put some of those questions on there, realized that that was of great value to people that sold such things. And you know, so now we've really been expanding those sorts of questions in our survey. Fascinating. Um, but one of the other things that comes out of our survey is that we do have, we are blessed with a very sponsor loyal audience. Um, Our ski tour and snowboard tour is a, it's a relatively small entity. We've been around for 20 years. There's a certain loyalty there that has come with that audience uh, based on the way Heather and our co-founder Frank Tanzi have cultivated that audience and mentored their children and, and developed generations. So that's something we bring to the table. And that had a lot to do with the activation that we're going to talk about. So Well, that, you know, there's a lot of talk in the sponsorship space about we got to get a million people or a hundred million people or a billion people to see a logo, to engage in some, some activity. But I don't know who wrote the book or who coined the phrase, but that thousand true fans, you get a thousand true fans to experience this, the stony field experience, the activation, because they love what vertical challenge does. And they love that it caters to their family and their family values you don't need a million. Maybe you only need 200 for it to be a high value opportunity for the right sponsor. So yeah, without further ado, to walk us through this, uh, this amazing activation. I see a giant cow in the background. Is that deliberate or is that accidental? <laughs> no, no, it is deliberate, actually. I was and, and, you know, as you described that, Chris, I feel like what you're seeing in these photos is exactly what you just described. It's that audience, it's those desirable families actually engaging with Stonyfield at some level. Mm-hmm. And the, the subtlety, the reason I picked this particular montage of photos is, yeah, it's the big cow in the room up there in the top right-hand corner behind the, uh, the gentleman drinking uh, some Stonyfield, whatever it is that he's drinking there. So what happened is, so as when Heather, you know, did this deal with Stonyfield, they obviously needed to figure out ways to activate on site. So you can see some tents and some banners and things like that. And one of the things they push is their sort of their, 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 uh, their dairy farmers and their cows and things like that. And that they're very uh, environmentally conscious about such things. And so they created a, basically a starting gate and they made it into a cow. Well, this cow debuted on about our fifth tour stop last year. And so, of course, like we do with all such things, we took photos of it. And we posted to our our social media platform. But Rush, where is the gold, silver, bronze sign with Stonyfield's logo tucked in the corner that no one cares about? <laughs> this no is... gold, silver, bronze here. No yeah. customized all the way. Yeah, Doesn't get more customized deal. than a cow at the starting gate. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. That's that's. First of all, gold, silver, bronze is no fun. And, and if we're not having fun at our jobs, why are we doing them? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, and then second, and, and Stonyfield absolutely embraces that. They're some of the most fun people we've worked with. They have a great attitude about their brand. And then, yeah, you're trying to figure out alternative ways and interesting ways to do things. And, and a big inflatable cow has never been on anyone in the history of sponsorships, gold, silver, bronze plan. Yeah, it, is, right. it is a custom activation in any scenario. Mm-hmm. So, what we were thinking about, and this really honestly came about pretty quickly. I think Heather sent me a photo of this, and then we started talking about what to do with it. And we were like, well, the cow needs a name, right? <laughs> and so we then quickly went to Stonyfield, and they were flexible. We were like, yeah, name. And we were like, all right, let's figure out how to make some buzz, some value out of this. And so 
what we did is, well, let's do a naming contest. And we came up with a prize and we encouraged people to submit their names via social media. So we put this on uh, Facebook and Instagram were the two primary categories. And so this was the first post about it. And so we suggested that our friends from Stonyfield had brought the cow to Cannon Mountain and she needed a name. And it's a she, of course, she's a dairy cow. And so we asked people to start submitting them in the comments. So this was the very first post we made. And so you'll notice down at the bottom there, we've tagged Stonyfield. We have tagged Cannon Mountain, which is the resort we were at. Um, Their resorts are obviously partners of us and we want to get their, um, you know, get them some, some love as well. Yeah. So that was how we started it. And so from there, it, it kind of started to mushroom a bit. Mm. So we start another one at Gunstock. And we're like, hey, you know, this cow loves to ski and snowboard, but she needs a name. Could you start asking, you know, suggesting in the comments? So you'll notice there now in the comments, we're starting to get a few suggestions. Yeah. Um, Bertha was a, obviously a really good one. Yeah. Um, and, and we had we had more. So we're starting to, to generate. Now we go on down to Jiminy Peak. We've got <laughs> Bessie. Um, we've got Snowbell. And I'm going to call attention before I give away the ending here to the middle one there in your screen. And it was Moo Moo. And it was actually suggested by a crew member and Heather and I were like, that was, that was, that was, I think Heather's least favorite. Oh, it was, was, I didn't think it was awful, but it wasn't, it wasn't the favorite. And I think part of it was who submitted it to. And tell me it didn't get like 10 million votes. And now her name is Moo Moo. Well, the Uh only people that get to vote on this are Stony Fields. So, okay. So uh, I don't know. I think their committee was smaller than 10 million. All right. Uh, Give or take. So anyway, so we continued this process. Uh, Here's another post where you see people submitting uh, options. And you also notice here, you notice this cow generating engagement. Yep. So this girl who attended the event that day going and posing underneath the cow yeah. which we saw quite a bit of and so that obviously was that's one of the reasons you make a big inflatable cow instead of just a plain sign right yeah. so that you, you generate engagement so now we go on and all right now we have come to the time when we felt like we had enough submissions and so we went to stonyfield i put together a whole spreadsheet hey here's everything we have we started talking through all the different possibilities and we made some recommendations we said here's why we think what we think etc and they ended up making a decision and so what we ended up doing was making a blog post to announce the name mm-hmm. and so this piece right here says hey we just announced it in the blog post go to our website Brilliant. so that will traffic to the website and here's the blog post so we wrote in there, we wrote a number of the names that were submitted. And like one of, one of the most popular ones was some variation of Frank after Frank, <laughs> Kinsey, who's our, our co-founder or our founder. And uh, anyway, there were a bunch of other funny ones and stuff like that. So we, we and, and we didn't want to lose those. Like we were only going to choose one winner, yeah. but we were like, you know, there were a bunch of great suggestions. Let's, let's throw them in there. And so we did. Turns out the one that Stonyfield picked was Moo Moo. And Mm -hmm. it did actually make a lot of sense. I mean, like they, it wasn't something where they just did it to tweak Heather, although that would be funny. They did it because they had some good reasoning behind it in terms, it's simple, it's easy for kids to say, it's it's very straightforward, not likely to offend, all those things. And so we ended up naming the cow Moo Moo. So I I just, I have to jump in here because I'm I'm, I'm looking at uh, Chevrolet, I see Mountain Dew, I see your audience obviously having a lot of fun. I can see exactly who's hanging out at your events and you're, you know, engaging with you and your brand. And I think, you know, I hear so often people are like, ah, do we, you know, will all these sponsors want to hang out together? And like, if we're giving too much love to Stonyfield, what does Chevrolet think of that? And these things all come together to make for excitement for all of your sponsors. Like one successful activation magnifies all activations. And and that's why through our valuation process, even we're like, do you have big name sponsors? Because with big name sponsors, they just amplify everyone's message and the, the more the merrier. And so I look at this, you're driving people to this website, to your blog post. It's all about the cow. 
but now you've got some awesome stuff to share with Chevrolet and your fulfillment report and Mountain Dew to be like, look at the great stuff we're doing with these other partners and all working together. And this is a beautiful shot of exactly that. It's very much uh, NASCAR is a good comp, I think, to what you just said, Chris. Yeah. They, yeah. they write into their sponsor contracts. Look, your, your logo is going to show up in other people's stuff. Yeah. And, but by the same token, and theirs is going to show up in yours. But guess what? It really lifts yeah. all boats. Yeah, um, I love it. Talladega Nights, the movie, made a, had a lot of fun with that. But yeah. it's, it's true and it's valid. And there were some sponsors that got a whole bunch of exposure in that movie. Yeah. Um, so we, we wrote this blog post, we, we did all this. So now we can actually announce it. It's Moo Moo. Um, we did another post, uh, to announce with, and we announced it right before butternut. And so on the previous post, as you might've noticed, we encouraged people to go to the event in there and mm -hmm. visit her. And, and then we also encouraged in this post to suggest to visit the Stonyfield booth when you're out at the event. So Beautiful. hopefully add a little bit more value there. And you're announcing and then, the name, right? Stonefield loves happy cows and happy people, right? Like their brand personality is being injected into this and Mumu comes to life and it's talking about who Stonyfield is not like people. I'm sure that their logo is very nice, but people being aware of Stonyfield's logo is not as valuable as being aware of the happy cow making happy milk, happy products that mm -hmm. make for happy people. Like that is... If you didn't do it by design, you should say that you did because it is a, it is a branding uh, genius move. <laughs> well, and I would, we'd be lying if we said we knew there would be as many user generated photos and things like that as there were that yeah. people loved posing underneath. We, we thought we'd get some of that, of course, but to the credit of how Sony Field designed the piece and, and, and all this, we got a lot. And so then this post is an example of where Sony Field did find value in it. Uh, they used it on their own channels. And so, you know, now that bounces back. Another example of some ancillary stuff, we, uh, now we're at going to go to another stop. The, the, another stop, the contest is over. But guess what? We got another cool photo of, of Mumu with the sun coming up behind her. And so now we used it in just the normal course of, of our social media. Uh, right. And so in this case, we were going to Black Mountain. Somebody wrote that ridiculous line, heard the moos. Uh, so again, we were able to, to, to play off of that. Yeah. Uh, and so we, we were able to incorporate it now into our stuff. And then here's an example of a third party using it. So we visited Lost Valley Resort later in the season. And they had a photo of it on their site. So now uh, this is stuff that you can't predict, but is obviously great. And again, it's somewhat of a credit to Stonyfields being willing to think out of the box yeah. to not going with gold, silver, bronze, because gold, silver, bronze doesn't get you uh, user generated content. Yep. And, uh, you know, and, and, and they're, they're, they're people who know how to draw a good cow and turn it into an inflatable. <laughs> um, and then another place this manifested itself was... Again, it's very noticeable, it's big. And so this was when we had a radio remote out at one of the events. And this is a DJ from WHOM radio posing with the cow. And Brilliant. that's another thing that we've tried to do this year and, and did last year as well, is find ways to incorporate our sponsors into our own media and even into paid media um, as in this case here. And you know, when just asking a media partner Hey, could you do me a favor and just read this list of companies so that we can tick a box in our fulfillment reports uh, because they're at the silver level and we said that we would put their name in a PSA. And then the media company, right? The media outlet is basically like, we're not going to do that, but but thanks for asking, right? It's, a re it's not a great value add for your media partners, mm. but this is cool, right? Like this is a reason to put it in your media. This is, this has stickability. It, 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 um, people want to see it. And it's an interesting story. You add that to the mix and now you have a reason for media to pick you up. And when media picks you up, all of your sponsors, uh, get some benefit and your valuation goes up sure. because of an inflatable cow. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> one, thing, one thing media are not into is boring. Boring does not do it for media. And so if you want to get, have any hope of getting some attention, you've, there's got to, there's always got to be an angle. There's got to mm -hmm. be something that's, uh, they call it news because it's supposed to be new. And so if, if <laughs> they probably didn't go to a ton of other events that week that had inflatable cows and mm -hmm. we did. So, um, you know, we had the winning, winning bovine. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> 
so then my last slide here is obviously once we got done with the season, we needed to, ex you know, recap it for Stonyfield. And so this is actually a, an excerpt from our recap that we did at the end of the season for them. Uh, more than 75 submissions for names, uh, 9,000 people based on engagement uh, of everything we could measure. Uh, and then there's obviously plenty of things they didn't necessarily weren't able to measure, but clearly added value as well, such as the radio, such as the blog posts on the website and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. Love that. Uh, just a quick question. Do you have 9,000 followers on your social media channel or channels? We don't. So there were shares and repeat visitors and things like that. So when we hear those things like, hey, you know, I don't have a million Instagram followers or Facebook followers, it just won't work for me. Again, it comes back to that thousand true fans or whatever your number is like, you knew mm -hmm. what would strike a chord with your audience. And it struck a chord. And the 9000 social engagements doesn't doesn't include all that media that is reaching a virtually identical audience. Um, and that that comes from knowing your audience, building activations for them first, and then talking to your sponsors about ways that you can connect them in, in meaningful ways. Um, One way this helps us in that way too, Chris, is I think, you know, based on our data that, that we, that our audience is loyal to our sponsors. Mm -hmm. And then based on what this does is this gives us a visual to show, Hey, that is true. If you as a potential sponsor um, find ways to activate around the things our audience likes, they're going to buy in. And this, I think this, one of the reasons we wanted to discuss the Stonyfield activation with you. And one of the reasons you were interested in it was, Hey, look, we've got some visual proof here. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You've, you've done more than uh, more than a handful of activations that I happily would have done a deep dive with you on. Cause there, are, there are some, some very cool ones, but what I, what I love about this activation in particular is that it's not a variation of a theme right? Like being really good at getting test drives. That's a, that is a good trait. That's a good skill as a sponsorship salesperson. The idea to have a giant inflatable cow that you name, and that contest leads to people trying an organic food product that lines up with their personal values. Like there's no, there's no rule book for that. <laughs> so and we did find increased, you know, sampling and awareness of stony field in our, in our surveys after the season was over. And so hopefully that was due you know, we, I don't know how to segment it out by a cow versus some of the other things they were doing, yeah. but certainly hopefully help drive some of that. Yeah. Uh, and so what were some of the things that you, that you were, um, that you were measuring or that you were, that you consider to be indications of success? Was this purely about brand awareness or was, did Stonyfield want people to consume their product? And there were like that, those are the kind of things you were measuring. Like what was the kind of the ROI based on, I suppose? So for us, um, the brand awareness was, was, a, was a piece of it, um, but the bigger piece that we were used for metrics were the number of samples that we handed out, the number of coupons we handed out, and the number of leads we collected from them because we did... At every single event, we did a giveaway. They uh, created some custom Stonyfield snowboards. And so yeah. we did lead gen based upon that. So that was another activation in itself for them. Um, and so at the end of the season, they were able to tell me how many samples they had given us. We gave away everything. There was nothing left. And then, um, and they were also able to give us the number of coupons that were distributed and, uh, and the number of leads too. So those were the, the true metrics, like the true numbers that we were, me that we were, you know, measured against. Yeah. I love that. So I have to ask who came up with this idea? Well, the inflatable yeah. cow. The whole thing, like, le like at the end of the day, yes, the inflatable cow, the naming of the cow, the like, how did, did you go to them and say, we've got an idea? Did they come to you and say, here's an idea? Or yeah. was it a conversation we that, that evolved? Did. you did? T tell me about that. I think we, the so, so, idea. so I'll, I'll be honest. Yeah, so I, I will be honest, this used to be called the Mountain Dew Vertical Challenge. Mm -hmm. And back in the day when PepsiCo owned, kind of kind of owned it, they didn't really technically, but anyway, owned the program, we had um, the marketing team had created an inflatable can tunnel. Yep. So 
for 20 years ish, it always had an inflatable can at the top of the hill, like a sideways can. Yeah. So once um, once Mountain Dew stepped down, they're still a sponsor and we've now shifted to bubbly because it's natural and organic and better for people. Um, we, that, that asset opened up. And so Stonyfield, it just was such a natural fit, like throughout the season leading up to like brain, really brainstorming with them. Originally I was like, oh, we should have farm animals because, you know, Stonyfield is all about, you know, the farm. And then eventually it went from a chicken down to this cow because that's where the dairy comes from. And, uh, and so we, we pitched the idea to them. They absolutely loved it. And uh, we said, hey, you know, you could put her at the top of the hill. And then if you want, in the finished corral, you could create a barn. So not only do we have an inflatable cow, Stonyfield cow at the top of the hill, they then skied from the cow and all the way down to the barn. And that's where the finish line is. So that's a Stonyfield barn Brilliant. as well. So it was something, an asset that we had something similar, but um, had an opportunity to replace it. And for us, we were just happy because that's what our audience wants. So it was, uh, you know, we had a few few sour fans that were like, where's my Mountain Dew? Uh, where's the key? All that stuff. And then the majority were parents going, thank you. Oh my gosh, thank you for bringing some really healthy products to the event. So so that's how it started. It was something yeah. that we had and from there. It just made sense. And, and, you know, as Rush said, they have been an amazing partner willing to activate and, and do anything that we've asked just to try to add excitement and fun for consumers. So you don't always see that. You don't always see, you know, sponsors, you know, you see them, here's your check, go away. Yeah. Here's your uh, check we'll and our brand guide for logo placement. And that's yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Exactly. And so, you know, working with someone that's a little bit smaller is really nice in that sense, because that's what they want to do. They want to activate and maximize their dollars. So, yeah. you know, having this big cow that now, you know, it's an asset that we've created and we store and, and warehouse all season long, but it's something that they could use for road races because I know that they also participate in road races. So, nice. you know, it became an asset that they could use 365 days out of the year if they chose to. Well, that. Uh, a good friend of mine and, and colleague in the sponsorship space, um, uh, he said that what he loves so much about sponsorship and what I love so much about sponsorship, uh, he articulated it as you have to think like a marketer, sell like a salesperson, uh, like a, a good discovery-based salesperson, and then you have to fulfill like an account manager. And that's your role as a sponsorship person. You have to be creative you have to look to the numbers and the data and people are like, oh, to be good at sponsorship, you just have to be good at relationships. You do have to be good at relationships and then 20 other things. And that's mm -hmm. what makes sponsorship so awesome. And without question, in my view, what makes, what makes you guys so successful in what you do? Um, how did Sony Field, how did they react? Like, what did they think of this? Oh my gosh, they were blown away. And their first opportunity to really see her was at Pat's Peak, which is local here in New Hampshire, not that far from where their headquarters is. They brought their CEO, their entire sales team, all their marketing staff. And we just got amazing compliments and kudos about how awesome the activation visually turned out to be. And then just them having an opportunity uh, to come and stand underneath the sampling tent to see how many people were coming up in the day. They were so impressed with the activation. Yeah. I love that. So you've, you get some employee engagement in there as well. Um, intentional or otherwise it becomes, becomes part of it. And mm -hmm. I think where a lot of sponsorship properties, rights holders go wrong and where you don't is they see the idea of logo placement. They see the idea of sampling tents. Uh, they think they are both necessary and sufficient. That is the beginning and end of sponsorship. If we put some logos on stuff, we have some teardrop pop-ups, we have some sampling, we're good, we're doing sponsorship. And I always say those things are necessary, but they're not sufficient. You need a mechanism then to incent, to drive people, to engage your audience. Like you, you, you have to work a little bit harder to get the outcome you want to measure it uh, and to get the sponsor involved in thinking and doing all of that stuff. And so, you know, you're, you talk about assets that I think anybody would recognize, right? Sampling, logos, speaking, media, but it's not 